Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are just tuning in for the first time, my name is Lauren and I am a first year, first grade teacher. I teach in Massachusetts. Um, currently I am in the state of Florida. And let me just get you guys caught up on everything. You will notice this background is not my classroom. Um, so as you know, school districts across the country have closed in response to the COVID-19 virus just to keep all of our families and students safe and just to be cautious. Um, last time I talked to y'all was my last day of my classroom. I've actually rewatched that video quite a few times because I'm just really missing it. Um, and at that point in time, we were told that we would be returning on March 30th. Um, since then, that date has been moved to April 7th, um, and then since then, last night, that date was changed by Governor Baker of Massachusetts in an abundance of caution. He doesn't want anyone returning to schools in the state of Massachusetts any sooner than May 4th. So as of now, May 4th is the earliest I could possibly be back in my classroom with my students. Um, but that doesn't mean that we are going to go back on May 4th. That is the earliest we could go back. So there's the update. I am in Florida because on Friday the night when I had found out that schools would be closing and um, we thought it was just gonna be like a two week closure, I decided that um, as an adult working and living in a state so far away from my family, I could work remotely from any location and to have time as an adult to be in my parents' home and see them and be able to spend that quality time with them um, was something that just really mattered to me. So I came to Florida immediately almost once we had found out. And then at that point, um, I was just kind of planning on staying for a couple weeks, like 10 days, honestly. Um, yesterday, I changed my flight to a date in April, and then we found out last night about um, the extended closure through May 4th. So right now, I'm in Florida. Um, I have a flight home in April 6th, I think, um, but I have no need to physically be in Massachusetts until May. So anyways, there's where I'm at with things. Um, it's been weird. It's definitely been an adjustment period. The reason I'm here with y'all today is because I want to show you guys what a day in the life of teaching first grade remotely or digitally even looks like. Um, these are new things for everyone. So I just wanted to share what I'm doing, what a normal day in the life looks like for me. So right now I am at my dad's downtown private office. He owns an office space down here that only he accesses. So um, I'm not in contact with anyone else. I'm maintaining social distancing and everything. Um, but here at this office, he has a lot of professional equipment because he does um, podcasts and webinars and such. So this is a good place for me to film um, my live Zoom meetings with my kids. Every Tuesday and Thursday morning, today is, sorry, today is Thursday, um, March 26th, and every Tuesday, Thursday, I do a read aloud session with my kids on Zoom, which is like a digital conferencing. It's kind of like a mass FaceTime um, from 9 to 9.30, and today we're going to read hopefully chapters 4 through 6 of the Magic Treehouse book, Dinosaurs Before Dark, but that's my first step. I wake up at about 7, um, get ready, have some coffee or some breakfast. Normally, I walk one of the dogs. That's the reason I don't stay at my parents' house to do these. Um, we have four dogs there, and they're very unpredictable. And I'm okay having um, like staff Zoom meetings there and muting myself, but not so much meetings with my kids and parents involved. I'd rather those be pretty professional, so I come down here just for these. Um, but anyways, now it's about 8.35. I have about 20 minutes before that starts. So I have all my stuff set up. I'll show you the very interesting setup that I have. And then um, I'm actually going to read an article because I have a grade band meeting from 10 to 10.30 and we're gonna be discussing this article, just kind of like sharing our perspective and thoughts on it, taking some notes and such. So I'm gonna be just rereading that article um, so it's fresh in my mind. And then our Zoom meeting with my kiddos will start at nine. I'm really excited to see them. This is only the second one I've done and last time three of them came, um, but I'm hoping that more of them will be there this time. So anyways, let's get going. All right, y'all, not even kidding. This this is my classroom. I sit here. This is my district computer with the webcam. And I have a whiteboard with some different markers to record student wonderings or questions. The book is there. And then this is my basket that I just take back and forth from our house to this office. My computer is literally sitting on a stool for his desk. So 
This is what teaching in your home or your home office looks like. Alrighty y'all, so that is it. It is now 9.36 and that ran a little bit over, um, but we had a great time reading chapters four through six and luckily chapter six ended on a really good cliffhanger. Um, I had, let's see, maybe seven of them come in this time. Um, so that's great. What I will do later, and you'll see this, is I will record myself just in a video reading the same three chapters and I will post that on our class tag so that the families who weren't able to make it can still stay caught up to where we are are in the story but right now I have about 24 minutes to race home so that I can be home for my 10 o'clock meeting with my grade level team so I'm going to pack up my stuff put it in my little basket my dad needs his office so I'm gonna hit the road get home and then head to that grade level meeting to discuss the article that I just read all about social emotional learning and the importance of maintaining that learning during this time of crisis so let's head home Hey, it's Buzz, and I gotta tell you, I'm enjoying the Deep Cuts Challenge. Alrighty y'all, it is now 11.54. That took a bit longer um, than I thought it was supposed to. In our original invitation, it said from 10 to 10.30. So I had kind of created my schedule for today, um, anticipating that that would be over at 10.30 and it was actually um, changed to 10 to 11, which is fine. But I had not yet um, eaten anything today. So as soon as our meeting just ended at 11, um, I just made some quick like brunch to eat and now it's about 11:55. 55 um, my plan for the rest of the day I do have kind of like a little work from home schedule that I've made for myself I can show it to you guys I suppose um, here let me show you Alrighty, so this is my schedule that I've made for myself for work from home, um, just so I can have some consistency. You guys know I'm all about planning and dedicating time to one thing at a time. Um, so anyways, this is Thursday. Did my wake up, did my breakfast. I've not yet walked um, the big dog. She's right here. <laughs> Didn't do that yet, um, but then got ready, drove downtown. I did my Zoom read aloud session. Um, in my hurry to get back in time and because this ran over I did not end up recording the chapters at the office like I had hoped to which is fine I'll do those here later just had um, our meeting is called crew so I just had that um, I have just 30 minute window every day where I just wrote to have a daily positive class tag post just some sort of like check-in like um, comment on this post how you're feeling today Miss Barner misses you thinking of you can't wait to see you soon um, and then our district has um, I guess I required might not be the right word. I mean, kind of, yeah. Required some PD from teachers every day as part of like your schedule, so that's here. And then I have a meeting tomorrow at that time, so that's why that's different. And then from 12 to 12.30 is supposed to be my lunch break. It's almost 12 now and I just ate, so this is all kind of wonky now. Um, basically, we are here where I have planning. I have alternate planning, feedback, planning, feedback, and then here is where I'm prepping next week's schedules. That's tomorrow. Um, so from now until about probably like 1.30 or even 2, I'm just going to be planning for next week and getting, if I can't get a head start on um, making next week's schedules to send to parents, I will. And then this 2 to 4 wellness break, um, I've just been kind of like honestly laying in the sun, um, enjoying the weather here, enjoying time with family. And we were encouraged to take a two-hour wellness break in our daily schedule by our district. So I moved it from 11 to 1 down here to like 2 to 4 when it's better sun, to be honest. 
Um, this is something I've been working on with my dad. Um, I'll talk more about that later. And then anyways, there's like the rest of my schedule. So basically, so pretty much right now I am on the back patio, um, still have access to Wi-Fi from my house, obviously. And um, we just decided in our grade level meeting that we are going to try and set some more like boundaries in communicating with families and parents and everything and do that from nine to five. And then if there's any contact um, before nine, it'll wait till nine and after five, it'll wait till the next day. Um, just to kind of get that normalcy back into our work lives and our home lives and that balance. Um, so that's been an interesting journey and comment down below if y'all have had any of that kind of going on as well. But anyways, all that to say, I'll be checking my messages regularly and responding to those while I'm here, but I'm also planning for next week. So let's get started on that. And then hopefully I can knock that out and um, then I'll be able to show y'all what I'm planning to send my kiddos next week. Alrighty, you guys, long time no talk. It is now about 4.15 and I've just been um, working on various things. I did get next week planned out. Um, so I can show you that in just a minute. And then aside from that, we just got um, a new like tracking document for parent communication. And um, this time has been a bit stressful to be honest for teachers because everything is new to everyone. So things are changing a lot. Um, what you're expected to do and how to document those things and it's all just shifting constantly um so anyways we got a new document for tracking communication um because we want to be communicating with families but we don't want to be over communicating with families we don't want to have the homeroom teacher the sped teacher and the guidance counselor all calling a parent on the same morning that would just be excessive so we need some sort of cohesive communication tracker which was sent out today but then we needed to backlog all parent communication one-on-one -on -one interactions that we've done via phone call text message email or class tag over the last two weeks um so as you can imagine there have been a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions between me and parents um so i was actually just like inputting entries into that new uh, tracker communication log thing for approximately like an hour and a half um, so that happened but then I also got next week planned so that's good and um, I don't know it's just a little overwhelming getting a whole new task that we need to do and trying to figure out all of the ways that I've communicated with parents it's just um, a new challenge every day this whole situation is just different for us so um yeah, that was a lot, but it's done. I'm caught up. So now moving forward, I will know to put them in there as it's happening, which is good. Um, but anyways, let me show you my plans for next week and I'll kind of explain some of the resources that I use. And um, then I think that will be all for today because it is 4.15 and you know what? School would be over by now and I would be gone by now. So I don't need to work anymore, but let me show you what my plans are for next week. Okay, so this is what the home learning schedules look like that I sent out to families each week. Um, last week was the first time, or I'm sorry, this week was the first time I had used this just because we were starting to have a more streamlined system of expectations and everything. So this is what it looks like. Um, each page has the student's name up here. It has the week that they're working on. And these are assignments for the entire week. So then if you look a little closer, it lists um, what they should be doing for phonics instruction. We use foundations. This is a foundations aligned um, deck of cards on Boom Learning. So they're gonna be doing those. Um, for reading, they are doing scholastic learning journeys. This is um, one of the at-home scholastic magazine resources for grade one. Um, there's a fiction and a nonfiction text, and it just has a follow-up activity for each of those. For math, they are doing some boom decks to practice skills that we've already learned. Flex learning are things that they can do to fill their time if they've finished everything else and they want something to do. They can go on Splash Math. They can go on Teacher Monster to read. These are both free websites that are incredible resources. My kids love them, so there's that, and their logins are at the top for everything that they need. Um, and then at the bottom, it just says class meetings, and let's talk a little about that. Okay, before I tell you my little piece about class meetings, look who came to join us. <laughs> 
Anyways, um, we have had two class meetings on Zoom this week for read aloud sessions, aside from the reading on Scholastic and then the phonics boom cards. We also just have had those virtual like hangout meeting sessions and we've been reading aloud the book um, Magic Treehouse that I talked about this morning. However, one of my parents this morning after our session let me know that um, the website Zoom is actually blocked on district devices. So if any family in the district didn't have a device at home for them to access digital learning, they were able to check one out from our schools. And apparently if they did that and they checked one out, then they can't get to the Zoom website to access our class meetings, which is really sad. Um, and I don't want that to be the case. I am a little bit confused because Zoom was recommended to us by our district why it would be blocked. So I am going to put in an IT request to have the block removed so that people can use it in the future. But for next week, I am currently trying to figure out how to schedule a Google meeting. Um, I'm hoping that that one won't be blocked and that's another platform that was recommended by the district. So we're going to try that one instead next week. Um, but those have been going well. And as far as like what we're expected to do for work, um, at least where I am, all work is supposed to be enrichment based on prior learning. So nothing should be a new skill. Um, it should just be practicing skills we've already learned this year. First graders are supposed to work no more than eight hours combined in a week. Um, on all subject areas, including work from specials teachers, um, from different supplementary teachers, from SPED teachers, from speech therapists. They should not be working more than eight hours a week as a first grader. So with that being said, that is the amount of work that I give them. And I ask the parents to please pace their students or let their students pace themselves, um, that they should be more concerned with the amount of time that they're spending working instead of the amount of work that they're accomplishing. Um, they just need to not be overworked at home and not too much screen time, obviously, as well. But anyways, that is what I've been giving them. I know everyone's situation is different, so if you have another resource that you've been using that you love, please let me know. This is the first time that I have used Boom Learning and I am obsessed with it. I bought the entire Foundation's year-long package bundle because it's amazing. Um, so that was a silver lining, I guess, that's come out of this whole digital learning landscape. Um, but I'm happy that all my kids have devices now and that we're kind of being able to move forward in this direction. I'm getting more comfortable planning for next week now that I have this week under my belt um, but yeah that's the day in the life teaching from home and sitting on my back patio in the breeze in Florida when all my kids are in Massachusetts it's just it's a weird time and it is difficult and it's frustrating and hard when you know you're going through all of the other things and the different um, like paperwork and forms and things that you have to do and you don't get to see their faces because <laughs> seeing them every day and being with them is like the saving grace of it all um, and that's what makes everything so so worth it it's just being with them so not being able to be with them is very challenging and I miss them so incredibly much um, but hopefully we'll see them soon that's all for today. That's all for this video. If y'all have any comments or questions about working from home as a teacher or you have any suggestions for me or anything at all, leave them down below in the comment box. Yeah, videos will look a little different, I guess, moving forward, but I'm gonna keep trying to document as much as I can um, and just take you on this journey with me like I have all of my first year of teaching. Truly an unforgettable first year now with this happening. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye, friends.